worst nanotech ever. So your boy Mauricio at Brown Table recently made a kick-ass video on why the overabundance of nanotech suits sucks. And it got me thinking about the use of a nanotech suit in a superhero movie that came out recently, which I unashamedly love. Is it this one? No, although that is a good one. Is it this one? No, although that suit is seriously sweet. Is it this one? Come on. God, no, certainly not. Oh, for fuck's sake. That's right, this is going to be a video about blood sport. No, not that blood sport. Although that movie does deserve a video all its own. Mauricio touched on the Bloodsport suit in his nanotech video. Nanotech shouldn't be the norm, we shouldn't be desensitized to it. Like in the Suicide Squad, you know why Bloodsport shooting at Starro with his transforming gun was cool? Because literally no other character in that movie has that ability. I completely agree, Bloodsport's nanotech works because it's unique within the context of the movie. No one else has that kind of tech. But I also think it's far and away the best nanotech we've ever gotten in the entire superhero movie canon for a variety of reasons. Even if this was in a scene with Iron Man, Black Panther and CW Flash, <laughs> this nanotech would stand head and shoulders above the rest. What's the secret source that makes this nanotech that little bit better? Why during a time where nanotech has reached critical mass does this character still feel fresh? What lessons can be learned in regards to the practical and computer generated effects, the construction of the action and the arc of the character in question? Simply put, this is why Bloodsport is the superhero character with the best nanotech ever. What do you think is the best nanotech suit in superhero movies? I'd count Star-Lord in there too. Let me know in the comments below, and if you like these DC videos, why not subscribe for more? Control, we have a disturbance. Nanotech often has a mind of its own, appearing and disappearing as if being psychically controlled by the wearer. Bloodsport constantly has to pluck the pieces from his suit in order to use them. Elba is always present whenever the nanotech is being used, rather than it being a post-production extra to the actor's performance. His mask is nanotech, sure, but he still has to physically remove it. He has to physically touch his head rather than it just forming around him all the time. He has to physically touch the pieces of the guns in order to put them together. Half the time nanotech doesn't feel like it's really there in the world. It's abundantly obvious that it's a special effect laid over the top of an actor's performance. Even though we know these technical feats are impossible, the weight that is given to Bloodsport's nanotech makes it feel far more authentic and believable. There are clear rules. I love how they sit on pieces of his body, and those pieces are associated with specific guns and moments, most notably the chest pieces on each peck being pistols. It's a really memorable thing in the movie, I get hyped seeing Bloodsport reach for each peck because you know these awesome dual pistols are about to drop some bodies. The standoff with Peacemaker has one of the best nanotech reveals. This tiny little pistol pops out almost taxi driver style, and it just makes Bloodsport so badass. He absolutely wrecks Peacemaker here. All the bullets. My guy needs to claw it back with a rematch, especially after all the development he got in his own show. And you're only really right about one thing, I am a piece of shit! I'm a piece of shit for listening to you for all those years! The way that Bloodsport puts pieces together to create new nanotech weapons is kind of an evolution to the idea that Iron Man's nanotech can run out. <laughs> I like it when there's a finite amount of nanotech as it adds more danger to the character. He can't just infinitely pull things out of his ass. We know that Bloodsport can't keep magicking up weaponry and that is perhaps clearer than it ever was with a character like Iron Man or Black Panther. Oh. 
Another key difference for most nanotech is that it doesn't stay CGI the whole time. Once the nanotech weapons are built, Idris Elba clearly uses a physical prop. There might be times it looks physical but is actually CGI, but the movie pulls off that James Cameron trick. When some of it is clearly practical, it leaves the CGI bits uncertain. Everything starts to bleed together, and rather than your mind noticing what's CGI and what isn't, it just feels real. We are allowed to instead focus on the story, the real reason why we're there. Fuck. That's true. Also vaguely Cameron related, you know a character's a badass when they spin their shotguns right round. Beautiful. In spite of the practical effects, the digital effects teams need a shout out too. I love the way his nanotech spreads, it's almost like the skeleton of the weapon appears first and the rest of the gun layers up over it. It's really satisfying to watch in a way that most nanotech just isn't. Having this kind of skeletal design just shows that there's way more thinking involved than something like Jane's nanotech helmet which just appears painted over her as and when she needs it. Adding some fantastic sound design much better than the homogenized, weedy nanotech sound we're used to, and it's just immensely satisfying watching Bloodsport produce every single weapon. A great design and concept. The fact the suit is really there goes such a long way, but it also helps that this Bloodsport design rocks so freaking hard. I mean, just look at this thing! The Xenomorph-esque helmet, the bronze armor pieces offsetting the blue jumpsuit, it looks comfortable and easy to move in, whilst also looking strong and durable. Even though blue is one of the most overused superhero color schemes, the bronze really lifts this whole look, and the helmet design feels so unique to the genre that it's hard to think of any other live-action comic book look that resembles it. No one likes to show off. Unless what they're showing off is dope as fuck. Whoever came up with that Xenomorph mask needs a freaking raise. I need to have Bloodsport and Suicide Squad kill the Justice League. I want to jump around in that mask. I want to create a whole host of different weapons. They've confirmed that more characters will be added to the game upon release. So Bloodsport and Peacemaker have got to be at the top of that list for me. Hell, a Bloodsport game in of itself would be amazing. Imagine if you got control of the suit and you could tailor your own nanotech loadouts from hundreds of different short range and long range weaponry. I really miss the times when games didn't take five years plus to turn around so that we got more and more takes on different universes. It's cool to get a game as polished as Spider-Man PS4, but it sucks when something like Avengers takes years to get to us and ends up sucking because you know you're going to wait five more years minimum before anything similar is even announced. X-Men Legends 1, 2 and Marvel Ultimate Alliance coming out within two years seems crazy in the modern gaming world. Vulnerability. Bloodsport is no slouch. He's packing flamethrowers, bowlers, pistols, grapple ropes. Here comes Slipknot, the man who can climb anything. And more. On paper, it sounds like all the makings of an overpowered character. In execution, he's anything but. He hits that perfect sweet spot of being charged up, but beatable in a way that doesn't sacrifice the excitement. In the final stand, he pulls out a sword, a flamethrower, basically everything he's got against the Starro Horde. A nanotech showcase, but he still gets overwhelmed. It's not a tensionless, seemingly infinite nanotech inventory. That nanotech moment with the big gun, the best part about that is that it looks awesome, yes. But it doesn't ultimately work. A few moments later. It's flashy and cool, but all he manages to do is piss Starro off. Bloodsport instead has to lean on his team to get the job done. Honey, take the high ground! Playing into his arc rather than his toys. The nom nom. Yes! Ha! It's your mom! Monster is nom nom! That right there is ultimately the biggest reason this nanotech and this character rocks. You can have a great power set and a cool design, but if your narrative is lacking, if your characters aren't sympathetic, you're going nowhere real fast. So that's why we've got to talk about how they put the story first. I could be your friend, Milton. Not my name. 
This is the real reason why this nanotech suit kicks so much ass. It's not about the plane, it's about the pilot, right? It's no coincidence that most of the sucky nanotech has been in superhero projects that haven't knocked out of the park in terms of story and characters. Then you have other characters like T'Challa and Killmonger, which people love, and you excuse some of the poor CGI that's associated with their nanotech suits. The characters can supersede any bad effects. <laughs> of course, the Suicide Squad stands out in that regard, even before we get to the nanotech. As the lead of the movie, Bloodsport is a great character. There's that brilliant scene with his daughter, which feeds into the Ratcatcher relationship, and I love how James Gunn didn't hold back showing off what a piece of shit this guy is. Eternity Tech. <laughs> To say he has an abusive, dysfunctional relationship with his daughter is an understatement. When I came here, that any goodness I ever had in me had been wrung out there by my old man. James Gunn always has a knack for illuminating the cycles of abuse that perpetuate this kind of behaviour. It allows us to see the nuance in Dubois' character, not entirely forgiving him, but seeing his point of view as well. The abuse he suffered at the hands of his own father is then physically signified throughout the movie via the rats, sometimes for humour, but then at the end as the conclusion to quite a beautiful arc. You're gonna send my 14 year old daughter to prison? No. Your daughter is 16, Dubois. He has a terrific sparring session with Amanda Waller early in the movie. And it does conjure sympathy for him because you see that he's pushed into an impossible situation in spite of seeing that darker side to him. No, I'm no fucking leader! Then I'll make you one. It makes sense that he galvanizes the team in the finale. I told you I'd make you a leader, Dubois. There's a great mythic backstory, what of him shooting Superman with that kryptonite bullet. He's got a great rivalry with Peacemaker. This is probably Elba's best big budget franchise role ever. Move aside Hobbs and Shaw, move aside Heimdall. It also shows that quality beats quantity. Elba was in multiple MCU movies, but the Asgardian never left as much of an impression on me as Bloodsport did in just one movie. James Gunn really gets nanotech. Star-Lord's disappearing mask walked so Bloodsport's tech could run. Both characters utilise nanotech without it being overpowered or overbearing. I was pretty disappointed when it was announced that Elba got to be playing Bloodsport originally. It was quite obvious that the character's place in the movie was meant for Deadshot, a more well-known character who I already wanted to see more of in a live-action space. However, in the end it seems that opting to go with Bloodsport freed up James Gunn to put more of his own stamp on the character, and the results were fantastic. I know there's a precedent for Bloodsport to magic up weaponry in the comics, but I could totally have seen this tech being given to Deadshot when he remained in the movie. Oh boy, would that have been an upgrade for Big Willy after the 2016 version. Now if Deadshot returns, he's not going to be as awesome as Bloodsport by comparison. Will Smith just can't seem to stop taking L's lately. Bloodsport has the sweetest nanotech in the game, and if every single iteration of nanotech in every superhero movie was half as well thought out as it is here, I don't think anybody would have as much of a problem with it as they do. I think it really goes to show that oversaturation is often born out of a trope or convention being done badly, rather than us simply having too much of a good thing. The reason why we're so bored of nanotech is because so much of it behaves the same, so much of it hampers the tension rather than enhancing it. So much of it has no rhyme or reason for it being there, and so much of it just looks like it was painted on in post. Bloodsport bucks the trend for nanotech characters, and I can't wait to see him again, because I just need more of that suit, man. I need more of that suit, I need more of that character, and I need more of Idris Elba being in actually good blockbuster roles. Bring on the DCU. If you'd like to hear more from me, I had a very candid chat with Josh Carr of Who Knew, on one of the latest episodes of his podcast. I talk about the past and future of Full Fat, what I've been up to, upcoming projects, and just generally shooting the shit, talking about Ryan Gosling and Doc 2 t-shirts. So go and check it out. The link will be in the description below. Thank you for watching. I haven't done a Patreon call out in quite a while now, mainly because I don't really offer any goodies on there anymore. You want the goodies? Welcome to the goodie room. 
I'm very grateful to everyone who's donated or donates to this very day, and you help the channel even at times when the views aren't especially great. If you like what I do at Full Fat, you're a long time viewer and you would like to see me continuing this, then I would really appreciate it if you considered joining any of the Patreon tiers. Contributing to the Patreon helps to keep the lights on at Full Fat HQ, aka my bedroom, and the more patrons I have, the easier it is for me to do more niche topics, less sponsored videos, and generally, honestly, make better videos, because sometimes when the views are on a dip, it is hard to get stuck in like usual, you know, it is just pretty disheartening, it's a weird one, you kind of, your enthusiasm lives or dies on, on how well it's going. Even if you felt like contributing a dollar, that would be another sweet note in my candy g-string. So please head on over to patreon.com slash fullfatvideos and see what you think. Thank you very, very much. A big thank you to my full fat tier patron, Dr. Chike and Nathan Shaw. If you'd like to donate money to my Patreon, you can find me at patreon.com slash fullfatvideos. If you'd like to find me on Instagram, you can find me at full underscore fat underscore videos. And if you'd like to find me on Twitter, you can find me at, at fullfatvideos.